Okay, we are back in, uh, mm, excuse me, in Cradle. Okay, so when you save the game, it, it just does auto-save, so I know we moved a bunch of the stuff around already, so we'll have to move it around again if we choose to do that. Uh, anyway, so I figured out exactly what it was I was missing. What I was... What I was missing was, you don't use that teapot... You don't use that teapot. You don't use a teapot at all. What you use is this frickin' wok right here, which is not a pot at all. Look, it zips right there. Look at that. All right. So we gotta do a, start the fire again. I don't think we really picked up or did anything else. Really too fancy here. All right. Need more firewood. Oh, come on. It's real finicky about where you click on stuff. Okay. Glass of water. Okay, what do we do here? Add a few cut palm bloom olive. Fruits. There are plenty of them by the lake. So, a two cup blue olive fruits grew near the lake. Okay. I don't know if uh, these little ponds count or if it means that big lake over there. The running kind of stutters. Not sure if that's coming through. That big structure is not the house. The house is right over there. Where are these fruits? I wonder if I can drown myself. Hmm. Okay, I guess the uh, water doesn't even go high enough. Surprisingly uh, far reaching here. Did not expect the uh, expect you to expect it to let you run around this far. Oh, 
No, oh, these are just rocks. That would be something important. Am I in the absolute wrong spot? how far out you can go while we're out here. Oh wow, you can go submerged. I think I'm in the absolutely wrong spot. Probably won't let me go over the ridge of this hill over here. But who knows? I stand corrected. Oh, we must be getting close to that uh, Dorato toxin or whatever. Oh, okay, that's a river, not even a lake. Oh, okay, so yeah, that's how they're going to explain you uh, not wanting to go over here. Okay, fair enough. Desperado toxin or whatever the hell it is. Alright, there's the house right there. There's a little pop in right here. Starting on, I think, uh, I think it's Tuesday. There's going to be some kind of an event going for Dark Souls 2. So, kind of want to get through this a little quick. Maybe hopping on that, but who knows? At the very least, uh, if, if I don't finish it, I can come back to it. So here's another dark area. Is this going to have the same kind of effect? Can we expect all dark areas to have that kind of effect? Or 
wants. No idea what kind of clouds he's supposed to be, but... You know what game this is kind of giving me uh, vibes of? Uh, Minotaur, the universe of... Uh, made by the universe of Seven. It's got the same kind of like alien world kind of cyber futurist kind of thing. Okay, where the frick are these? Stupid fruits. Okay, probably just supposed to be around here, I would assume. Took the hard way to find that out, though. Those red fruit on the tree look edible. I'll try and find something to use to knock them down. Oh, okay, I need like a stick. Come on. Okay, so it's this kind of tree. like throwing at him all right Here's a stick bam painful. Alright, I'm starting to understand why this game got uh, mixed reviews. Some of this item hunting is uh, kind of ridiculous. Okay, I need a knife. Knife, thank you. Okay, I guess I'm chopping it on the floor. Add dried root, we will forget to grind it. Dried root, and where do we find the dried root? 
Empty matchbox. The pack is empty. Is this it? I use this on this. I'm just gonna assume I use all of these. There are some roots hanging outside. Okay, I've been doing this completely wrong. Whoops. Okay, here we go. just can't get close enough to something to drop it off the edge to grind it. National Hunter Goon, okay. Door is jammed, okay. Very useful. Useful stove then. Must be somewhere in the crockery. Okay. Where is the crockery? Thank you for. Are these a uh, mortar and pestle? It's not keeping itself. Ah, here, this must be the mortar and pestle. Alright. Okay. Okay, we got the dried root. Add salt and the water will turn orange. Return the salt jar to its place right of the pepper. Alright, one of these is. Nope. There we go, that looks orange. And it did stuff. And it's okay to do cook it until it's done. Angats will show up as soon as he smells the food. You can sell all the stuff you, you like and toss the okay. I'm assuming we put that here. Okay. Hello, burb. I assume you are on gods. Okay. Oh, are you still in an animation? The clasps first. 
Okay. New task added. The eagle can't speak, but it may still be as used to be. Replace Angat's vest. Alright. Oh, that's cool. Uh, powered by that little crystal there or something. All right, game saved. There is a four-digit number on the inside of the vest. Is a key to valuable information. Find an application for the number. All right, where did I put that thing? Two zero five three. There was a code over here. A key. Maybe the tablet. Yes. Two zero five three. Ba da ba da. Access granted. Okay, I've got a journal now. Thanks, Tabaha. My name is Anabish. I've always lived here because I can't go anywhere else. Grandpa Batjan says lots of people used to live around here, but they all died when the dome blew up. The area has been deserted ever since, aside from myself, Batjan, and Angats. My guts has, uh, has very powerful claws. He obeyed my father and helped him hunt hares. I don't remember my parents. They died in the explosion as well. When the wind picks up, it gets pretty chilly. You can find refuge from it, but not for long. You can't last long without light. That's why I crafted this transparent layered vest. Like in that program about greenhouses. It keeps the hung guys warm during the day. And when the night's chill arrives, I put him into another warm vest. I collect and digitize flowers. I look for the prettiest ones and make phytocopies of them. Tabaha then takes them to the town and sells them. The earnings keep him afloat while Grandpa and I buy cheese. Appropriate use of funds there. We've got a new genometer. Measures everything. Flowers, insects, people. I clocked Botjan at 47 and the tree by the gate at 24. Even the school got measured, even though it took a little longer. But when aimed at Angats or myself, it still shows the same old error. Grandpa says it's all of Providence. Maybe he's right. I have this dream sometimes. I'm in a strange city. The day is waning. Folks are walking in the distance. There's somebody beside me, but I don't see who. The dream is fleeting, always leaving me with a strange sensation. Like I'm supposed to be supposed to pass something to somebody. But I can never remember what or to whom. I feel some mix of anxiety and a chagrin. Grandpa Bajan has died. He wanted to do a transfer after losing his sight and mobility. Tabaha even brought him the equipment, but Grandpa died in his sleep. He was buried out of the spot he had requested. Tomorrow marks the four year anniversary of Grandpa's funeral which means I'm already 23. Everything is still the same. I tried leaving again, but no dice. I simply lose consciousness like before. I want to find that town for my dream. Perhaps I'll risk it and do a transfer. Grandpa, Grandpa's got no use for his helmet these days, but I might. If I get lucky, I'll wake up in a new body in Ulaanbaatar. Too bad the genometer won't show my number. I know how dangerous it is. When I look at the poster over my bed, for some reason I remember my toys. When I was a kid, maybe five or so, I had a favorite toy. An odd little space case. Lion Guts had found it somewhere and brought it to me. Then I saw dark swirls in the field. Got scared and stashed the toys away for some reason. And to make sure I didn't forget the hiding place, I came up with a clue. Come out of the yurt 
and fly straight as a crow. On a rock with a snag, look for an arrow. A sorrowful tree will show you the way. A box in the sand will a mystery betray. But now I can't find it. Okay, so well, I probably have to remember this. And fly straight as the crow. And a rock with a snag. So we're looking for a rock with a snag. Biddy -biddy. We're making progress. Alright. Okay, perhaps old things will provide a clue as to what happened to me. A rock with a snag. This one, I believe this is probably the grave for, yep, that's the grave for Monster Dude. Grimbator or whatever. Rampa Grumpy Face. On a rock with a snag, look for an arrow. That almost looks like an arrow. Item hunting. Oh, you can kind of see an arrow here. If you go from here to there, that's like part of it in the thing right there. If you kind of squint, I don't know if that's what they're talking about. A sorrowful tree will show you the way. Assume this is the arrow they're talking about. Sorrowful tree. So we need to get into this little isthmus between here. We need to find a sorrowful tree. Of course, we may have messed up on the very first clue, so this might be an entire waste of time. Sorrowful tree. Okay, this one looks like it is. Oh, wait! An arrow. They're pointing this way. Okay. I think that's probably more likely. Looks like a lot of these have that same kind of detail. So, okay, arrow pointing this way. A sorrowful tree will show you the way. A box in the sand will a mystery betray.
look this one up. Okay, so it's got an arrow carved out. We were wrong on the very first uh, clue. I know all of these have like a weird carving on them, but because it's a flat rock. It's this one over here because of course it looks like it's this one over here oh there we go there we go no. sorrowful tree Looking at Joe, you come to a group of rocks. You should see the cash poking out of the sand nearby. Hmm. Guess in the wrong spot. Well, we're in the generally right spot. He isn't even using a walkthrough, and this is. Oh! Oh, there we go. And this is ridiculous. A doodad. Chewing gum insert, Mongolian comic book hero slays a dragon. Alright, I can't put it. Oh, I can't put it in my inventory. Okay. After time is the processing device, the main part of the mechanical body. There are two more parts in the yurt. Use them to repair the young android woman. She may provide valuable information. Connect the processor to the young woman. Okay. Come on. Oh, okay. Is that train literally like flying through the wires? Ha! <laughs> I guess I didn't really animate it too much. Oh, they gotta add in all these lovely puzzles. Okay, let's see here. Connect all. Connect all.
Ah, I got titties in my face. Womp, womp, womp. Can't use. What am I missing here? Okay, I gotta replace it. All right. New task added. Find and connect the synchronizer. Is this the sink? Oh, come on. Is this the synchronizer? That must not be the synchronizer. Is it this thingy? But wasn't there some other thingy over here? Strange device is on the yellow table. I'm sure. I'm not sure what it is. Is this the synchronizer? Want to make sure I don't lose that. Okay, I still need the synchronizer. This is thing. Hmm. That doesn't. I'm real afraid that some piece is going to just like fall through the floor or something. Is this the synchronizer? Yeah, where, where the hell did that one thing go? Although, since it doesn't uh, actually save your real game, it just saves uh, breakpoints or waypoints, should be pretty easy to just go ahead and... You know, load a most recent save. Okay, what do I do with this? What is this? What the hell 
wants a synchronizer. Oh yeah, so I don't have to worry about kicking the chair around either. Uh, do, Eleven is the synchronizer. What does it look like? Eleven, eleven, eleven. Eleven, okay, it's this round thing. Okay, a round thing, and it goes in the chest cavity next to the P5 container. Okay. Oh, there we go. Chestinator. Boop. New task added. Switch on the mechanical woman and talk to her. She's alive! Hello. Hi. Hey. Oh, it's voicing itself. Can you hear me? Where am I? Somewhere in Mongolia, in some yurt. What happened to me? I don't know. I don't remember anything either. Was it you who switched me on? Yes. Are you a Volga? I don't know, but I doubt it. Where did you get my neurochip? I found it in a cache underground. What cache? A long time ago, I hid a cache of toys in the ground. You were playing with my neurochip and then buried it in the ground? <laughs> well, that's a... Uh, that's, I mean, that's certainly a way to put it. I mean, it's the correct way to put it, but I mean, you know... Looks that way, but I don't remember any of it. My name is Enabish, I think. And you are? What do you want? I want to know what's going on here. You're not a Mulgar. I don't know what a Mulgar is. I don't know what a Mulgar is. Can you explain? Someone who kidnaps people and sells their substance. What substance? I don't understand. My name is Eva. And I understand even less than you do. I do not recognize this body. There's something wrong with it. I can't see anything and I don't feel my legs. What's wrong with my legs? They're, um, fused together. Kind of like a vase. What? <laughs> Who would make something like this? You've got a flower vase where your legs should be. That's ridiculous. I'm scared. Calm down, Eva. Tell me, are you a robot? I'm a human being in an artificial body. You mean you've had your body replaced? Half of humanity had their bodies replaced. Where did you get my neurochip? Eda, I've just now found it in an old cache. The cache you made when you were a child? Yes, if my journal is to be trusted. How could my neurochip have ended up in the hands of a child? Ongots brought it. My father's trained golden eagle. I don't know where he had found it. How long ago was that? Long. Eighteen years ago. Listen, Enabish. I feel ill at ease here and scared. I want to remember who I am and return home. Please help me. I want the same thing. How can I help? You need to call the evacuators. They'll come and take me away. I've been trying to send a request, but it's useless. My marker isn't answering. What marker? The authenticity marker. It's like my passport. It's got all my personal data. 
All requests must be accompanied by data from the marker, but it appears to be broken. So what do we do? I don't know. We might be able to use my neurocopy number, but I don't remember it. I remember almost nothing about myself. Just like me. Well, at least you're in your home. You know about your childhood, your family. I'm not sure if I'm home. I don't know this place. Strange. Listen, why don't you start asking me questions? Anything you wish to know. Maybe that will help sort my memories. Maybe I'll even remember the number. Are you all right? I feel something is wrong with this body. I can't figure out what, but we need to hurry. Tell me about artificial bodies. About bodies? All right. They are called M bodies. Hold on. Why replace people's bodies? Because of the epidemic. There was a virus that spread across the globe. A sterility virus. They couldn't fight it, so they developed this... body replacement program. Transferring consciousness from a regular body into a mechanical one. Kind of like a personal refuge? Right. A temporary refuge. People use it to hide from decrepitude. Once the virus is cured, we'll be able to return to our regular bodies. The virus could be gone by now. It's been years. I don't know. It was just so... No treatment worked. Not antibiotics, nothing. There was only one substance capable of destroying the virus. Passium. But the accumulation process was extremely slow. How was it accumulated? It was extracted from people themselves. Human beings produced it with their nervous system. Nervous system? I don't get it. Well, passium can only be extracted from emotions. Whenever you experience an emotion, any emotion, your M-body manufactures a little bit of the substance. A substance produced by emotions? Yes. Emotions were the only thing capable of making a remedy against the virus. As a result, Passium skyrocketed in value, far surpassing everything else. And every person, they became... Everybody became a source of value? Yes, although... There were people whose substance was considered more valuable than that of others. Who were those people? People that were special, somehow. They had something. They were greatly respected, but... I can't remember. I think I figured out what's wrong with me. I can't breathe. Breathe? You need oxygen? I simply need to inhale air. It's been inherited from my former body. A reflex. I can't get rid of it. All M bodies have a special module built in for this very purpose. It imitates breathing. Can I help you somehow? I need a breathing module. Could you find it for me? Where do I look? We're in the middle of the step. The step and nothing else? Describe for me what's around here. The river, some abandoned complex. What kind of complex? A big dome with multicolored sails. Hold on. Yes, I see it. I've got access to it. The Gerbera Garden. Enabish, I remember this name. I used to have a connection to this place. I think that it's an amusement park. It looks the part. Embody parts restored there. In the pavilions. It should definitely have a breathing module. Body parts in a children's park? They were once used in a show. But I don't remember exactly how. All right. I'll try. Find the seventh pavilion. I'll try to find the password to the file database. It may contain my data. If I remember anything, I'll contact you. Help me understand something. What's that? What's a neurochip? A consciousness carrier. 
When a body gets replaced, the subject's nervous system is copied to the neurochip. There it lives and develops, just like in the former body, or close enough to it. For one thing, there used to be no need to reboot yourself. Reboot? Sometimes the neurochip needs rebooting to clear the errors that accumulate. I don't really know much about it. Essentially, if too many errors pile up, it starts to disrupt your thinking. You start feeling out of it. That's when the neurochip should be switched off and back on. We call that a reboot, and it is a highly, highly unpleasant procedure. What do you mean by disrupted thinking? Well, your speech gets distorted, for instance. You start mumbling as if you're delirious, but it doesn't end there. Your motor functions can be affected. It varies. Got it. Okay. New task. Alright, head to the Metamuse Park and get across the enclosure. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. Danger. Desperata. Despera. Desperatoxin. Contaminated. Keep away. Desperatoxin. I'm assuming that's how you say it. That symbol. <laughs> Warning, you will uh, you will have this happen to you and you really don't want that. Trust us, it's bad. I assume we just walk around until we find an opening. even be it looks like a the letter D with a guy upside down I don't know you will get deed take the D right into the ground It feels like they're supposed to be like interlocking parts, but I guess uh wasn't in the graphics budget. Looking like there might be a space here big enough to sneak through. What is 
What's that? Is that conscious? Will it come after me? Just kind of like floating around. Feels like it is messing with the graphics. This entire thing is definitely not uh, very optimized. You get a lot of stuff on the screen, especially like weird graphics, and it certainly chugs. Uh oh. Is it coming for me? What happens if it gets to me? I want to find out. Okay. It uh this is with me, but then it uh kinda goes on its own way. Well, at least we know what it does now. Another one. It didn't look like it actually kills me, it actually just knocks me down, so you know, it's maybe more it might kill me if I get, you know, hit by a number of them at once. Is it gonna come after me or is it just uh moving around randomly? Oh yeah, it is coming after me. Kind of. Oh no, they uh, start from the middle and kind of come out. You know what, this is kind of reminded me of a new game that came out, uh, Pacific Drive. I haven't played the game yet, personally, but from what I hear of it, it's very much a similar thing where there's like a middle of a installation and the closer you get to the middle, it's the in middle of the installation, it, uh, like weird stuff happens. It's kind of a SCP sort of thing. Well, when did that whole SCP thing really get started? I think this game may technically be kind of pre that. Because this game came out in 2015. I don't know when the whole, that whole thing really started. Well, then again, 2015, yeah, it would have been technically post-SCP, but I'm thinking. I'm guesstimating. Okay, here we go. Looks like I'm not the only one who's been trying to get in here. Yoink. I remembered who those people were. The ones whose passion was regarded as more valuable. It was their genes that made them special. Their DNA had fewer errors. In other words, these were people with good heredity. Such people produce a special kind of passion, which contains a valuable component. It was this component that was needed to fight the virus and not the whole substance. That was why they commanded such respect. Humanity's struggle against the virus hinged on them. Back then, everybody used to say that the emotions of beautiful people were our salvation. Okay. Can't do 
with a block. This looks like an entrance over here. Maybe not an entrance. Okay, not an entrance. They definitely really like big wide open spaces, which definitely can be a bit uh, troublesome graphically, so kudos on them for shooting big. Herbert Martinez, Carolyn, okay. Oh, oh, this is probably where Ungas got the doohickey that flew in here, grabbed some biohazard material. Came back with her brain. His normal walking speed is far too slow. You know, for the kids. I love this crap. That is terrifying. Expecting it to power on. He was telling me to get in the seat. Automatic report card. Right, nothing. Huh. So it looks like it could use it as a, tr is it just like a tube, you get like uh, zapped up into the tubes or something? Or what is behind the curtain? Oh, this is part of the uh, body process, okay, I got it. Okay, as long as that thing's over there, I should be okay. I think we determined they don't actually chase after you, but they will, uh... Okay, that looks like a, the spawn point for them. They've been warbling. Go check it out. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, hey, it's that symbol. Yeah, it's in the emotion core, I guess.
I want to do this kind of uh, methodically here. So we came in through there. So the thing was there. So because what this is. Okay, I cannot climb stairs while crouching. You do not see me. And there's nothing I can do with that anyway. Come on, come on. Yeah, they really gotta optimize the graphics here a little bit better. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing. Where'd that one come from? Alright, that's another one. Ooh, here we go. So long, suckers. Oh shit. <laughs> well, let's try that again. Nice that it's a very uh, forgiving game. What am I missing here? Oh, when you take the slide down. Okay, that's kind of badass. Okay, Northern Lights. Okay, we want the uh, Sector 7, I think it was. So that's one. Okay, so there's a bunch more of these. There's seven. Okay, so there's two sides can come in. There's nine. Don't need to waste time on every little zone. Let's go straight to seven. Now that I understand how uh, the things go. You're at the location. Hold on. I'll try to open the doors. A nice little padded room. This isn't creepy at all.
is that the breathing module? Pavilion Endless Sands. Collect 30 blue cubes to gain the breathing module. Throw cubes into the uprising stream. Hold the right mouse button while throwing to make the, a burst of cubes. What? Don't fall into water. That reduces your scores. Make use of the uprising stream to lift yourself. Create platforms. Variable cubes are hidden inside those. Apply a blue cube to a white one to create a platform. Right click to delete the cubes blocking your way. What? What? Okay, so we throw these in there. What are you? Is that the bad guy coming to get me? This is like some the heck? No, oh, shoot. Okay, so he just kind of goes wherever he wants and blows up. Okay, this part is stupid. I got a good bit. What? He so crap. Stupid. Is it just like every time I pick up a blue one that it spawns one of those red ones? I'm assuming. So, how can you make a. What can you do with a white one again? I think it's a, use a red one on a white one or something. Alright, I gotta get 
gotta get up a level, I think. Yeah, I don't wanna lose all the stuff. So. Was it you? Yeah. Huh. Okay, if we somehow fail this and I gotta go back, I'll look up what the instructions were. Okay. Yeah, you. You suck. What? This is the amusement park where they uh, send the bad kids. Or maybe, was it? Is it blue on red? Or is it blue on white? Oh, I see. The wind is just there to suck in all of the air into, like, building block cubes. Yep, so every blue block you put in, it throws up one of these jerks. Okay. We gotta go down. Another level. Make sure I leave a staircase for myself. Okay. Okay, it's just sucking in all the unnecessary little cubes. going to be playing Minecraft here. But it's such an entrenched part of this game, it's almost like they were originally planning to make a Minecraft game. Then decided at the last minute to make it. Oh, let's make a uh, adventure game about a uh, weird robot body swaps. There we go. 
What? Oh, it slowly destroys the stage. Okay. Yeah, I just uh, threw a cube uh, in there thinking, hey, I have another cube. Okay, where's the rest of the blue cubes? There's one. There's one over there. Okay, so the tornado thing is basically slowly destroying the stage in general. Kind of as a timer. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to look up how you create cubes. Uh -huh. I what that cube alchemy was. Uh-oh. Oh, you bastard. Yeah, I can't. Wait. Now that I'm at this level, I don't think I can actually climb up at all. Wait, is it? Did I lose points somehow? I thought I had at least three of those petals in the outer portion. Let me try running into here. What happens? Oh, yeah, I can go to the middle and fly up. Okay. That was stupid of me. Yoink. Come on. Come on, game. Oh, if you hit the water, you lose two. What is this? Yep, I lose. <sighs> you can skip this mini game. Yes. Yes, I can. Thank you. Oh, 
Okay. We will return the breathing module to her next time. So, till next time, Alita. Let's see what the task is. Start Edith's breath. Help her focus on her memories. Find a way to exit the territory of the complex. You know what? F it. After that, I don't want to, you know, go on a, on a sour note with that, uh, That nonsense. Let's go take this back there. Go out on a happy, happy note. Perfect. Stash that. I don't know whether this would be useful, but there were people that were dubbed outsiders. For whatever reason, they sought to spread the sterility virus. They were the reason the virus became a global scourge. But how they did it, or why, that I do not remember. Oh! <laughs> Oops, I was not expecting to do this. Well, then again, it makes sense. I cannot take the Normal way back. Yeah. Oh crap. Oh. Oh no, never mind. We were supposed to disembark. That's cool. See, this game has a lot of uh, really neat ideas. It has a lot of really neat stuff, but then every now and then just has uh, something real clunky like that freaking mini game. That cube game. It's like, where, where the hell did that come from? Who thought that was a good idea? You know? Okay, where's the breathing module go? Uh, breathing module goes in the chest cavity. Did you bring the module? Yes. Yes. How do I install it? There should be a pipe inside the chest. A trachea. The air passes through it, so we need to connect the module to it somehow. All right. Bam. Thank you. Don't mention it. Finally, I'm breathing. How goes your search? Did you find the password? Not yet. But I did remember a bit about myself. I used to work here at the Gerbera Garden as a teacher, I think. I remember kids being brought here to watch a show. They would then play in the pavilions, carry body parts from there, and pile them up by the stage for some reason. What an odd amusement park to build. Strange hmm. indeed that it was built here. There's something I don't understand. You said it was abandoned, but it's still operating. It's got power. Why wasn't it taken down? There was an explosion. It's full of some poison. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anything about that? Um, you think I know what it was that exploded there? Disparatoxin. What's that? That's the substance from which the virus came into being. The epidemic began after one such explosion. One? You mean there were other explosions? Several hundred, all across the globe. Who carried out the explosions? Remember I was telling you about the outsiders? The explosions were their handiwork. Were they terrorists? What was their goal? No goal to speak of. They weren't even doing it on purpose, really. 
Simply, sometimes their Patsian capsules would explode in their chests, spontaneously. The emotions generated substance with the cause. What was wrong with it? It had a dangerous component, bitter Patsian. It's a kind of dark liquid which may suddenly turn poisonous and explode. Those people were carrying a bomb in their chests. It wasn't their intention to massacre thousands of people and strip the entire race of the ability to procreate. But that's what happened. But how are they different from the others? Genetic defects. The more defects in the DNA, the more bitter the Passion becomes. Outsiders were at once pitied and feared. Nobody wanted to live next to a time bomb. Many outsiders left their hometowns. They didn't want to cause anyone trouble. So that's why they were called outsiders. They were called all sorts of things, including lower class and ugly people. I still remember the slogan, protect society from the emotions of ugly people. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I might have to uh, clip that. That sounds kind of funny. What's an unexpected problem for society? But not the only problem. Living in an M body requires fuel, and fuel can only be obtained in exchange for sweet passing. Provided you have it, which the outsiders did not. They were unwitting spongers. What is sweet passium? That's the valuable substance produced by beautiful people. I told you about it. In reality, sweet and bitter passium are two parts of the same substance. Everybody produces both components with their emotions, only in different proportions. People with purer DNA end up with more of the sweet stuff and less of the bitter, and vice versa for the outsiders. Beautiful people are therefore valuable, whereas ugly people are dangerous. <laughs> so where did the outsiders get the means to live? They were issued poor heredity assistance from the public rescue fund. The fund was founded and sustained by a special tax that was levied on all the citizens. First and foremost, on the beautiful elite. A lion's share of the reserves went towards supporting ugly people. Thus, they became a constant headache, not only spreading the virus, but also draining the rescue fund. Those ugly, poisonous spongers. It was their emotions that were poisonous. Uglies are dangerous merely by living and feeling, in that they deprive the rest of any hope of returning to the way things were. I remember all the heated debates, the frantic search for a solution. And did they find it? Yes, I think so. The committee proposed a hibernation program, putting the uglies to sleep. Come again? What kind of sleep? Deactivation. A voluntary shutdown. A temporary one until the virus is destroyed. And many of them agreed, realizing it was the best option they had. I don't know whether it helped or... Hold on. What? The password. I think I got the right one. Yes, I'm in. I see the files. Trying to find info on the employees. It should have my data as well. You've got strange eyesight. Why is that? You see virtual files. I wouldn't refuse regular eyesight either. It's all dark, but I can't figure out what's broken. The screen on your face. It's broken. It's called a look screen. And yes, it's damaged. Might there be a working one at the Gabera Garden? There probably is, but it won't recover my sight. Something is up with my lens, and the garden wouldn't have those. Nor do I know where to find them. I suppose I'll look for a lens then. Where? In the field? There's nobody around. What was that? Don't know. I'll go check it out. The, the train. <laughs> yes, the uglies were put to sleep. Alright, so yeah. There we will call it for now. I think it's just the train. So. Yep. That's what we'll call it for now. Anyway. Till next time, later.